Welcome back, I'm Kim Bailey and this is video five in our five part series for beginners in floral art. Remember it's for people who have never tried this before and we're using things you can find around the home to give you an introduction into thinking about how you could use all of the plant material that you can access, whether it's in your garden, when you go for a walk, whatever it is, whether you get giving flowers, all of those things, these are easy ways for you to use them. So in the past four videos, we've looked at the tools that you can use from around the house, and they're things like scissors and knives, not industrial tools. We looked at containers that you can find around the house that you can use and how to use those best and make them a little bit different to what they're looking at like now. We did some basic designs, whether traditional or more modern designs. We looked at how to use one of the techniques we talked about with the containers to actually make a design. And in this last video, I'm going to suggest to you ways you can utilise the pot plants that you might have, particularly if they're foliage or they're not flowering at the moment, to add a little bit of life and a little bit of variety into the collection that you've got. So we have here a succulent and I was given a, a cutting of this after a competition that I went to and it sat around in a glass jar creating its roots for probably 12 months before I actually decided I'd better put it into the ground somewhere, into a pot somewhere. So it's, it's come along in leaps and bounds in the last six months and actually got some nice growth on it, but the back of it's a bit bare. And each day I look at it and I think, oh, it'd be nice if there was something over the back there, you know, just something sympathetic to it, but that would give it a little bit more interest. The pot's pretty dominant, the yellow in the, in the pot. So I, I looked at maybe I could get some yellow gerberas or something that would just give it a bit of a pop of colour above the, the pot that it's in so that our eye travels up through it and just makes it a little bit interesting. Nothing like that in the garden, but what I did find were some pineapple lilies. And that's what they look like. And it sort of, it, it reflects the shape and the foliage enough and it's got a little bit of yellow through it. So I'm going to put those in the back to give it some height and to give it a little bit of interest and it doesn't detract from the actual foliage that's here. Now this is a particular design style in competition, it's called potter fleur and it means that you have a pot with something growing in it and you add flowers, so that's the fleur part of it. The the, the foliage that's in the pot has to be in a growing medium and the flowers have to be in water, they have to be cut flowers, they can't be the flowers from the, the plant that is actually in the, the growing medium. So that's on the competition side of things, but you at home could utilise that all the time by adding a little bit of variety to the things that you're looking at. It's interesting that most recently I was in India for a world show and one of the lectures that I went to there they talked about how the flowers that are in a lot of their architecture that are depicted in their carvings and the tiles will show one stem with three different flowers on it. So a lot of the time you'll see one stem on a tile perhaps and it'll have an iris flower, a daffodil and something else. And that was because this area that we were in it was a desert and so people travelled a lot and they came back with these stories of all of the flowers that they'd seen in all of these other countries and that got translated as the stories got told into it was a plant with all of these flowers on it. So it's almost that's what you're doing. And it is a plant down here and it's got these interesting flowers that no one's ever seen before. So let's have some fun with this. Obviously we've got to put a water source into the soil and again keeping in mind that we're going around the house. I found this completed um, bottle of uh, supplements at um, Vitamins. And so we just need to cut the lid off that and that can bury nicely into the soil here he said, without hardly any effort at all. I'll leave it out just so you can see that it's there but you would normally you would bury it all the way down. Don't want to damage the roots too much. So make sure that when you're choosing the container that you put into the, the plant material here that you choose something that will go in as far as you want it to without damaging what's growing in the plot, pot but will also be big enough for the stems that you're going to use. So we're going to use the pineapple lilies 
I've got three that I probably won't use all three. I'll probably just use maybe two. Uh, and I've also picked some agapanthus leaves because I felt I wanted something that would, would droop over a little bit. So what I'm doing is just massaging the stem at the back so that it will give it a little bit more of a droop than it might normally have. So just flattening out that stem a little bit. You just do it with the heat of your hand, so you just do it really slowly until it gets to the point where you're happy with that. You can do it inching down as well if you're not confident about running your finger down the back of the spine. So that, that's all I'm doing, just running it down. Thumb and forefinger just down the spine, really slowly, really gently, just using the heat of my fingers to give it a, a little bit more pliability. Just trim those up. Using the knife today just to give myself a little bit more space in that container because it's not very big. So all I've done is just trimmed off the side so it's a little bit more of a, a stem than it might normally be. And what we might be able to do is cheat on this container and just have that come around a bit so that it hides the container a little bit, tied into a knot. So it might just stay in the design somewhere. No, we won't. It's too fiddly. And that's probably too long. So we want it about there. So let's cut it down again. Much a bit better. We don't want it to be too overpowering. So just make sure we've got it the same on both sides because there's a reasonable amount of symmetry in this plant. making it too much like rabbit ears. What it does is give us the transition. We talked about transitions in the previous video. Gives us the transition from this plant material which is taking our eye down to, oh, there's something a bit more interesting at the back here, but it's still got that flow that the, the, the front material has. And then we're just going to put in our pineapple lilies. We might use the three, I think. Grouping them again. Remember we talked about not having everything at the same height, so I won't have them all even heights. We want them to be different heights so that it makes it interesting. We might leave this one. And that's as hard as it gets. That's just adding some interest to a part of your pot plant that might be vacant at the moment, empty at the moment. And it, you know, if you put that up against the wall, well, it'll just look a little bit more interesting than the plant that's always taking our eyes back down out of the design. This way, we've got a focal point. We look at it here. We can bring our eyes down. This material that's standing up takes the place of the smaller plant material that we used in the previous design because it transitions, it moves our eye down to where it's, the design's coming down to the bottom. So there we have it. That's our five part series on getting you started in floral design. These, as you can see, are the designs that we've done throughout the series. I hope that it has given you some incentive to get yourself started. And as we progress through the next stages of looking at how you design, you'll be ready because you've looked at the tools you need to use, you've looked at the containers, and we've started to talk about some techniques 
that will help you overcome the hesitation that you might feel by not knowing where to start or what to do. So thanks for watching and I will see you in the next series. So there we have the completed design. If you are stuck like I am with this container sticking out of the design and you really can't get it in any further and you need that size of container for the plant material that you're putting in, which I did with this plant material because it's so heavy, the other thing you can do is find a, a bit of driftwood, a stick, or something that's interesting that you've collected on your walk and add that into the design so that it hides it. it again, it's a, it's a part of its plant material that is sympathetic to all of the other shapes and the movement that is happening in the design and it hides your container. Or you could put bark chips, you could put a little bit more soil around it, all of those sorts of things. But I think the, the added piece of the driftwood just adds, once again, some more interest to the design, shows that you've taken that step just a little bit further in what you're doing. And that's a part of what we want you to understand in looking at these videos, is that you start out doing things that you can use around the house and as you get more comfortable with what you're doing, you'll start to see things when you're walking, when you're looking at your plant material. The, the things that die off on your plant material can be used. Just open your mind to what you're seeing rather than try and keep yourself narrow in terms of, I saw this design and that's what I want to have. Look at everything in terms of how could I use that? Where could I put that? What would that be good for? And that will give you an idea of how creative you really are because everyone has the ability to do something with plant material. We're surrounded by it all the time. We appreciate it all the time. It's a matter of finding what you're comfortable doing and this series of videos is, to, is designed to give you the basics so that you can do that for yourself. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next series.